Hey everyone, and I'm back again with another video and today it's just going to be a few white on black drawings that I've done in recent months that I uh, had a chance to film whilst I were doing them. I were going to add a couple more but it already took video to like 10 minutes and I didn't really want it to go any longer than that so I've just capped it at four different drawings and I've put the time lapses for them first, one after other and then the actual photos, the finished drawings, you can see right at the end of the video. So if you want to see the actual finished drawings a little bit better, then um, they're, they're all there at the end of the video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about these white on black drawings because a lot of people do seem to like the look of them. And I've been getting a lot more requests for them, you know, in commissions and what have you. Before it used to mostly be tonal drawings that I were getting. And now I'm getting a lot more of these white charcoal on black paper ones as well. I've also had quite a few other artists ask me about them and what have you in the you know, Facebook groups and places like that where I like to post a lot. And anyway, I'm always recommending that people give this a try, you know, this general technique. I mean, either in charcoal, which is what I'm using, or you can use a range of other mediums like uh, coloured pencils, pastels, or you could do it in paints like oils or acrylics. It is something that I'd like to try in acrylic someday, but for the past few years it's just been back-to-back -back commissions for paintings and I've just not had a chance to paint anything that I want to paint so if I can get a little bit more into the teaching side of things and start making money from that then I can start not relying on commissions so much as a form of income I can start just not doing so many commissions and then start drawing and painting for myself a little bit again and being able to draw and paint some a little bit more variety rather than entirely dependent on what clients are wanting me to paint for them which is practically all dogs and it tends to be you know all similar kind of dogs most of the time as well. I get a lot of border collies because when you're doing agility and sheepdog training and that kind of thing so I know a lot of collie people and I get a lot of collie commissions for that reason. But anyway yeah I would like to try it in acrylic someday and I will do. I'll find the chance to do it. But yeah, I'd recommend anybody having a go at this white on black technique. It's a really nice effect that you get from it. And you also, you get to practice just drawing in the highlights and, and not having to worry about the shadows because especially, you know, in the charcoal or pastel or dry techniques, you're letting your black paper do all that work for you. Your black paper is your darks and then all you have to do is draw and paint your lights, which is quite different with a lot of mediums because you're having to draw and paint your darks as well and then you put your lights on top a lot of the time you don't have to do any of this with this technique because you're not drawing any of your darks so you're just focusing purely on your highlights and that's it and it's a little bit like other way around to you know when people are actually drawing in the darks and then especially if you're working on white paper with black charcoal you'd put in like your darks and then you'd let the white paper do the job for you like leaving the white paper there for the highlights and then this is completely other way around and people are a little bit less accustomed to this so it's just about building your skill set and being able to see how light it things in a different way and what have you. I've always had a little bit of a liking for you know more extreme lighting effects as well so when you get photos that have got a more dramatic kind of lighting they work really well in this technique and I do kind of like portraying that in my artwork. When I'm doing my more traditional kind of paintings and things like that, it's like for example reference photos taken in strong sunlight where you've got really contrasty light. They don't make very good references for them kind of portraits but when it comes to doing this technique they're absolutely ideal. I mean as a photo they don't look that good but once you put them into this technique and just doing your highlights in this white on black technique you can actually make the image look really good in comparison to reference photo. <laughs> and another misconception is that a lot of people worry that a black dog won't show up on this white on black technique and that's because it's a black dog on black paper but what you don't realise is that, well what these people don't realise is that when you get the light reflecting off a black dog, if you put a pale background behind a black dog it will actually tone down the highlights on that black dog. It makes them less noticeable, so you, it sort of has a silhouetting effect, so your dog just looks like a black shape. But when you darken the background behind that black dog, them highlights on your dog really pop out in a way that they don't when you've got a pale background. 
so black dogs actually look really good in the white on black technique I have done plenty of white dogs in this technique as well and this you know work, they work quite nicely as well but the black dogs really do come into their own in this technique these border terriers in this picture they're border terriers are kind of like a, an overall a brown colored dog but you get a lot of white hairs and black hairs and brown hairs all mingled in together and they came out quite nice as you can see in this current drawing that's taking place if you want to see how a white dog turns out in this technique then I did include a drawing of two mostly white Akitas in my Art Is Not Free video so I'll link to that above in the description if you want to go and have a look at that I did include two drawings in that and it's the second drawing in the video I think Meanwhile I've got a black German Shepherd coming next so you'll get to see the, the black dog and how they turn out Moving back to mediums, one of the reasons that I like to use charcoal in this technique is because well one, it's, it's really quick, you can put our drawing quite quickly using charcoal and the other one is that it's really easy to blend you just get the, the blending stump and you can get lots of nice effects from it because it's so easy to blend when you see me doing the layers and then blending each layer as I go along or you can use a, a, a small brush or anything like that I tend not to use my fingers because the oils in your fingers can sort of mark your paper and what have you. I have to even be careful resting my fingers on edge of paper because it can sometimes leave oily marks and you can't get rid of them. Not so bad on black paper but if you're using toned paper it can be really bad. I find the white charcoal a lot easier to erase as well than things like uh, say white coloured pencil. I think that would be quite difficult in comparison to erase and I do use a lot of erasing in this technique because when you come in with a blending stump you might end up covering some black paper that you didn't really want to be covered so you have to go back in with like an eraser and I'm mainly using a mono zero eraser in these I think but I've started using a kneaded eraser a lot more as well and I also come in with a small amount of black charcoal just to get some tiny little details that it's really difficult to get with an eraser but I do try to keep that to an absolute minimum where possible my preferred brand of charcoal pencils are General's Pencils. I think that it is one of the best brands for charcoal pencils that you can get. They are made in USA so if you're in UK it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to get older in but it's generally fairly easy. I get mine from Jackson's Arts and they usually have them in stock. It were a little bit more difficult of a Covid period when things weren't working the way that they normally work <laughs> everybody were off sick and things like that or isolating and everything else so I'm guessing the General's pencils manufacturers were suffering just like everywhere else in that sense so I'm now working on this Black Shepherd that, as I mentioned before and this dog you can see it's got sort of kind of like a more diffused lighting on it it were techno indoors so it didn't have any bright sunshine shining on it Believe it or not, this one were commissioned by another pet portrait artist and she specifically wanted this dog drawing or painting in this kind of sort of style with the black background and what have you and I thought, oh that's just what the kind of thing I do so I showed her a few of my examples and she decided to go ahead with it I did ask her why as an artist she wanted to get another artist to do a drawing of her dog for her but she just said that she just didn't feel up to train her own dog at this time but I said maybe she'd do it in future but she said that she'd got a lot of animals so it's a case of which one does she do first and when does she get time to do them which I can sort of understand because I mean I can't really find time to do my own these days I've got three dogs and I just can't really find time my youngest I've not done a painting of her I've got paintings of my older two but I've not got a painting of my youngest and she's nearly six now and I've just not found the time to be able to do a painting of my own dog. <laughs> Speaking of time, if you normally watch my videos for my tutorials then I probably won't have much time to do any more tutorials before Christmas. I might manage to do one but it's going to mainly just be time lapses and things because I've got that many Christmas commissions to get through before Christmas. I think that's going to be my priority. And then after Christmas I can resume with more tutorials again. The only thing with time lapses is finding music to put with them. And at minute I don't really want to pay for a service because I'm not getting anything from this YouTube channel at minute. That's something that I'd probably decide on whether I wanted to pay for a service in future if I get monetized and start making some money from the channel and then you can start investing a little bit more into it. 
Meanwhile, I thought about making my own music and putting that with my videos instead, but it's been a long time since I made any music and I've got to familiarise myself with all the uh, software and what have you for making music, so it's probably going to take me a little while to get into that. And again, it comes down to time. So if you like this video, if you want to give it a like and maybe give me a sub if you haven't already and feel free to add any thoughts in comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!